All right, hey gang. Um, this is 100.7 WRDU out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, it's coming in with a peak VFO power of, you know, minus 35, 32, sometimes in the 20s. I am getting RDS data from them, as you can see, which is one of the ways I confirmed this was WRDU. And they're also coming in stereo. Um, it's not an exceptionally strong signal. Uh, the, the stereo is, uh, is a bit noisy. Um, and the audio spectrum, I haven't really heard it when it's dead quiet. I have it muted right now because they, they were playing music. If they were doing advertisements, I would probably go ahead and turn it on. Um, but here's the amazing thing. I, I'm, I'm sitting here doing this. I'm sitting in Lynchburg, Virginia. So this radio station's 122 miles away. Um, they're putting in 100,000 watts, and their transmitter, you know, I think it has the advantage of being about 1,900 feet above the average terrain. But here is the thing I find interesting, is here is their predicted coverage pattern that I got from Radio Locator. Uh, Lynchburg isn't anywhere on this map. In fact, uh, Roanoke is up here, and Lynchburg is somewhere probably about right here, way off the map, way past the fringe. Um, so I'm not sure what exactly is is to you know thank for it. Is there some some kind of FM skip going on the night, or is it just the signal might always make it out this way? But either way, let me show you guys the antenna rig I'm doing this with. First of all, I'm sitting on a third floor attic, because there's the top of the roof. I'm sitting on this porch, built onto the second floor of the house. Uh, I got my RTL SDR dongle. Nothing, I'm not using power on this, because I'm simply using this as a pass-through, because I'm using the 9 to 1 bail-in with a 300 ohm twin lead feed. Uh, impedance mismatch, but I have to say I'm pretty impressed with it. So, let me get up here, and we're going to follow this all the way over, about 20 feet past the splice, to a twin lead folded dipole antenna that seems to be of the vintage Sony variety. I don't know if I can get that to come in at all. There's a lot of glare, but there it is, the vintage Sony variety. Uh... I'm not sure exactly how long that is. I believe it's like most of them. I think it's tuned to somewhere in the middle of the FM band. Um, but that's all I've got. And I don't, even I, don't even, I don't even have a really great splice here. It's just some electrical tape and some spare twin lead I happened to bring with me because I said, hey, I might need twin lead. So anyway, that's what we got going on. Um, I gave up on my AM te performance testing around here. Um, so I'm going ahead and playing around with uh, FM. I gotta say, I'm really, really impressed. I never expected to pick up an FM station from 120 miles away in stereo with the RDS data. Um, like I said, I don't know if this is uh, some kind of crazy atmospheric thing. It is, um, is kind of cloudy. Uh, not foggy, just cloudy. Um, ironically, the other night when I first played with this, I had it in the house and I was getting 97.5 WWV out of Charlottesville, which is a good 55 miles away. And it wasn't even coming in this good. Um, I don't remember if I was getting 107 or not. I'll have to go back and check my, um, logs. I logged a minute of, um, airspace every megahertz the entire 2 megahertz baseband. Um, I can go back and look at that. Maybe I'll have, maybe I won't. I had different drivers and different gain uh, settings. I'm using, actually on this, I'm using some, they're calling them experimental drivers that give you a bit more, a few, a few adjustments for your gain rather than having one main set gain you have uh, separate gains for your low noise amplifier, your mixer, and I'm not sure what VGA gain is. I'll have to look that one up. Uh, hopefully, I'll figure out the acronym. It's not Alaska Round.
But uh, yeah, I'm very clearly seeing HD radio data from that station in here. And um, unfortunately, if, if it was, if I had an HD radio, I really doubt I'd pick it up because as you can see, if I can get close enough, the upper, the upper side, the upper HD radio sideband is being swapped by an adjacent channel. Uh, but again, I don't, I don't think it was designed to work over this kind of distance. So I don't know. It, it's kind of impressed me. I mean, it's impressed me enough to get on here and make a video without having any idea how I'm going to film it and say or anything like that. So, uh, Anyway, uh, just like to, just wanted to share that, get it on video, and maybe somebody will, uh, maybe this will convince a few people that it's not a bad DXing solution. I think the only improvement I can make now is upgrading my SDR dongle to a more expensive unit with higher resolution, and I might look at getting maybe a 12, 12 bit ADC unit, uh. The prices will probably may, might drop in a year or so. Who knows? Next Christmas, I might be getting a brand new uh, SDR radio. Um, we'll see. But hey, you know, for right now, this this kind of proves the ability of it to me. I've been uh, really impressed with the FM reception, and uh, I mean, I'm just outstandingly impressed with that. Uh, like I said, I have no idea. Like I said, it could be normal reception for this area. I'll have to go back and look at my uh, logs again. But uh, yeah, this is pretty neat. Uh, pretty sure we're still playing something I can't really broadcast on here. Let me just find out. Well, let me clear the window out and uh, close. Who's lead? Here we go. To WRDU.com. What's the best way to bring people together? Well, you got to hear that. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to get out of here and, and, and see if I can get any more DXing done in the FM band. Uh, so, hey, take it easy. Good night.